one of the major component of the Gorta model is the fever range total body hypothermia, also called the moderate hypothermia. And what we do, we bring a patient with infrared in a special kind of tent uh, to increase the uh, core body temperature, so one and a half to two degrees. Um, why do we do this? We want to activate, to sort of wake up the immune system. So around 37 degrees, uh, the uh, usually core body temperature, the immune system is like on an automatic pilot. Things go, and it's on an automatic pilot. Now, is there an emergency or the immune system must be activated? That can only be through fever. There's no other way, to my knowledge, where you can activate, really, so wake up the immune system. And therefore, also in the, in the brain, there's a very complex uh, uh, thermometer and a center to maintain core body temperature, but also react with fever with the slightest need for an activation of the immune system. There's no being on Earth which can so quickly and, and actually effective react to stress as a human being with fever. And unfortunately, Fever is seen in the modern science as wrong. You should always prevent or suppress fever. And, but studies show, also with little children, when you give them Tylenol all the time, so paracetamol all the time, they, have, especially till age three, they do much worse, they have more allergies, they have all kinds of immune problems. That's because you can also decondition the body to make fever, and usually, how many cancer patients come to us, they say, the last 30 years I was not one day sick. But they mean I didn't have fever, because they did have once, one or two days, a sore throat or a headache, or they had muscle aches because of viral infection. But usually people consider that as okay, you take a tablet and you, you don't feel anything, but you're sick when you have a fever. But and then they understand through how we work here that fever is your best friend with very few exceptions. So fever is absolutely necessary also to maintain a good functioning body. So I feel, I usually say, well, these pan epidemics of the flu going around the world, and maybe you're sick, but not everybody gets the flu. But if you get the flu, a couple of days you have a, a fever, that's good for you. Yeah, that might de decrease the chance to get cancer. Yeah, of course, there may be people at high risk for complications with the flu, that maybe you should prevent that. But I think 95% uh, of all of us would actually benefit if we every five years or so have once a couple of days fever, maybe through a flu. But it is also known, a lot of studies are done in the grown biology, that cancer patients always have, well, almost always have, a much lower core body temperature, often up to a degree lower than what is normal. But what's even more important, they don't have a circadian rhythm, a 24-hour rhythm. Normally, when you're healthy, then in the morning when you get up, so it's 5, 6 o'clock, your body is at the lowest level. It should be so like 36.8. And the end of the afternoon, also when you are all sitting all day at your desk or on the sofa, your, your temperature should go up to about 37.3, 37.4. So, that, so they can almost put a sinus curve through it per 24 hours. And cancer patients, it is extremely rare that they have a core body temperature in the morning of 36.8, but they have no rhythm. It is practically stiff. There's no circadian rhythm. And we have often looked at it. Those patients who quickly, within two, three months, their circadian rhythm returns, they always have a much better prognosis. 